As car enthusiasts, we all love seeing our vehicles looking and performing at their best. But over time, even the most well-maintained cars will begin to show signs of the paint fading and becoming dull with UV damage, swells and scratches as the environment and elements take their toll over the years. For many of us, using a polisher for the first time can be a scary step, as understandably, there's always going to be a little uncertainty. This is perhaps the main reason why so many people settle on hand polishing their car rather than benefiting from the amazing results that a random orbital polisher can provide. Dual action or DA polishers use an oscillating movement together with a free spinning action that actually makes them extremely safe for polishing car paint in comparison to the traditional rotary polishers that have a single forced spinning action. Today we're going to be polishing this Range Rover using the Shymate DA kit which includes all the polishers and pads any beginner needs to get started. Before polishing any vehicle, it's vital that the car has been thoroughly washed and that the paint has been decontaminated and prepared for the polishing stage. Next is examining the condition of your car's paint and understanding a little about the paint you're about to polish and correct. Not all car paints are the same, just as certain scratches, swirls and many paint defects can vary quite a lot. So having a basic understanding that the car paints found on many European cars tend to be quite a lot harder than the much softer car paints found on most Japanese cars can actually help you quite a lot in choosing which type of polish and pad is going to get you the best results. Generally, harder car paints tend to require quite a lot more work with your aggressive polishes and pads to correct most scratches and defects. But they will then prove to be quite easy in achieving that perfect high gloss finish. Whereas softer car paints tend to be much easier in relation to removing and correcting defects, but then become a little harder to achieve that perfect polished finish. There is also quite a lot of difference in the many scratches and defects found on car paint. Most common are swirl marks that are usually a result of improper washing, but thankfully most swirls can be machine polished out without too much effort needed. Taking the time to assist the car's paint using an adequate light source, such as the Prism One handheld, is really an important step in assessing the paint's true condition. The last thing you want to do is work blindly or work with a light source that isn't going to give you a true representation of the paint's condition. Your first step of polishing a car's paint should always start with a test spot and always begin using the least aggressive method that could potentially achieve the desired results. I'm going to be starting with Shell Concepts S20 Black, which is a medium polish, on the ShineMate Blue Diamond Polishing Pad. As you can see, these pads have diamond-shaped cutouts that actually reduce friction and minimise heat as you're polishing, making them incredibly safe and ideal for beginners. Always make sure to perfectly centre your pads on the polisher's backing plate, as this will ensure the machine runs smooth and works at its best. I'm going to be using some masking tape over this section of the bonnet so that we can clearly assess the results of the test section. So starting with four pea-sized drops of polish on the pads, I'm going to place the polisher on the paint. I'm right-handed, so I'll place my right hand over the front rubber grip, which will act as my controlling hand, and my left hand will hold the base end of the polisher and act as my guiding hand. I'll then turn the ShineMate polisher down to its lowest setting of one, turn it on by flicking the power switch, and quickly spread the polish over a two by two foot section. Next, I'll turn the polisher off, turn the speed dial to number five, turn it back on, and begin doing what is known as a set of passes. Using just slight pressure, I'll start by running the polisher with quite a slow arm speed, using horizontal lines overlapping each other by 50%. Once I get to the end of my two by two foot section, this is known as one pass. I'll then do my second pass using vertical lines to repeat the process, and then a third and fourth final pass, switching back to horizontal and then vertical passes to complete my first set of passes. Using a quality microfiber cloth, 
gently wipe off the polish with very little pressure. Now it's time to inspect your results. Making sure you have an adequate light, hold it at arm's length above the paint and move it around your test section to determine if you have achieved the removal of the main defects and are happy with the results. Also, compare the test section to the unpolished paint to also see how much paint correction you have actually achieved with your first set of passes. If you're happy with both the amount of cut and defect removal, as well as the gloss and the finish, this will be known as a single stage paint correction. If you feel you haven't removed as many defects as you'd like, or you can see that the paint isn't as clear and glossy as it could be, then you can do what is known as a multi-stage correction. In this instance, I can still see quite a few swirls and scratches after my first set of passes with Shoal S20 Black on the blue ShineMate diamond pad. So in order to remove more of those defects and scratches, I'm going to try a second test section using Shoal S20 Black again, but this time on the slightly more aggressive yellow diamond ShineMate pad, using the exact same process as before to see if this combination works better. The defect removal was much better on this paint with this combination of polish and pad. However, if I felt that I still wasn't achieving enough defect removal, I could then step up to using Shoal Concepts S3 Gold on the yellow diamond ShineMate pad. I'm actually quite happy with the clear and glossy finish that this second combination has produced. So now that I have my combination of Shoal S20 Black with the ShineMate Yellow Diamond Pad, it's time to use this combination to polish and correct the rest of the car. You should start by using masking tape to protect any rubber and plastic trims from making contact with your polish and pad. Using the same basic method that we did on the test section, work your way around the car, preferably in a top to bottom pattern, working a two by two foot section at a time and always check in your work with your light to ensure you are always achieving the same results on every panel section. Using a pad cleaning brush such as this one, turn your polisher on at a medium to fast speed and hold it firmly against your pad to remove the residue after each set of passes or two. This will keep the pads clean and performing at their best. Also, as your pads begin to heat up through constant polishing, swap them out with a fresh pad to allow them to cool down. Your pads will last a lot longer doing this and create consistent results all around the car. When you get to the smaller and more curvier panels of the car, it can be a little trickier to polish those areas. To achieve the best results on those curves, you need to do your best to try and keep the polisher and pad as level as possible around those curves. Tilting and moving the pad so that it follows the contours and curves of those panels. The aim is to keep the polisher spinning freely, as that is when it's doing the most work. And using lighter pressure around those curves will also help the dual action polisher to keep spinning freely. And once you're happy with your results, be sure to protect the polish finish with your favorite wax sealant or coating so that all your hard work will last as long as possible.